tell us a little bit about your family's history and um, what you learned from your parents and grandparents about what it was like living under communism. Well, um, my father came to this country in 1956 and my mother in 1961. I grew up knowing that Communism was something that you never wanted to live in, and both my parents stood against it. My parents taught me that in communism, you have no freedom of speech, you have no freedom of worship, you have no freedom of anything. Everything that you have belongs to the government. Hmm. You do not have the freedoms that we take for granted here in America. I grew up knowing that I went to school in communist Yugoslavia for first grade, and I grew up knowing that that police officer who I saw every day on the corner while I was walking to school, he wasn't there to make sure that I was all right. He was there to make sure that no one would speak out against communism or Josip Tito, who was the dictator at the time. I also knew that I had a thousand US dollars. I was six. I had a thousand US dollars in my backpack and I knew that if civil unrest broke out, now imagine being six years old and being taught about civil unrest. And I knew that if civil unrest broke out to get into a cab that was waiting for me at the corner and that cab would take me to the border of Serbia or actually, I'm sorry, Yugoslavia and um, Italy. And I knew that that was my way to get out. And my parents would come when they were able to. So in families like mine, we have a great appreciation for America and for everything it stands for. And my father passed that along. My mother passed away many years ago, but my father, Stevie knew my father. And my father passed that love of America to both of us, to all of our family. Mm. My father was a proud American for 57 years. He changed his name from Andra to Andrew. When he came to this country, he had $10 with him and he got a job at a company that had Italian. They spoke Italian as did he. He took night classes to learn English. My father became a shining example of a successful American immigrant. And I'm very proud of both my parents. My mother was a PhD tenured professor from the University of Chicago. So I'm very proud of both my parents and what they accomplished when they came from nothing because they lost everything during the war. Hmm. My mother's home was taken over by the communists. And so they were displaced. So they were sent somewhere else. They eventually ended up in Lyon, France. That's where my mother came here from. But the things that my dad taught my children will always resonate. And I feel that's what taught Stevie to stand up for himself more than anything. I mean, my stories, my dad's stories, that's what Stevie learned from. And we've always taught our family that we've always said, after America, there's no better nation. There's nowhere else to go if America falls. And we have always placed an emphasis on freedom of speech, the second amendment, freedom to worship, freedom to be who we are, and respect for the government, the police department, and everyone who is in this country. So that's a great background story, Gloria, for why your family loves America so much and would love something like Independence Day. So Stevie, what was it that happened on July 4th, 2020, that sparked a raging controversy and national news coverage at Belmont University. What is it that you did on summer vacation? Well, it was around 7 or 8 p.m. I remember very vividly it was after uh, my parents and I had dinner together and right before I was going to visit with some friends to shoot off some fireworks. And I remember it was raining a little bit. And I had posted a picture of myself in front of the White House that my parents took a few years prior from our last trip to Washington, D.C., and it was a picture of me in a sweatshirt. Wait, let's pause. I just, I'd like to ask our Mr. Producer to please put that picture up so everybody can see what a great picture it was. This is such a nice picture. Okay, go on. And my caption on the photo on the 4th of July was that I was proud to be an American, and I thanked our forefathers and those who had served so that we could have freedoms and liberties that we have today that our forefathers intended for us in 1776. 
And within hours, I remember being at my friend's house and people calling and people texting saying, have you seen what's going on with your Instagram? And at the time I had my notifications off because I don't really like social media. I think it's a, an evil, terrible thing. It's just a necessary evil nowadays. But I remember looking at it and there were hundreds of negative comments from fellow students, friends of mine at Belmont University, people I knew and people I didn't know, saying that I was a racist, that I was an awful person. There were people saying that I needed to kill myself because I was celebrating a racist holiday and that I should be ashamed of myself and I needed to apologize. And really what it boiled down to was during that summer of 2020, when BLM was rioting and burning down cities and destroying private property and killing innocent people, I refused to post a black square on my Instagram page. You know how many people were doing it in their stories. Uh, I refused to do that. And I refused to endorse the BLM organization because my cousin was a police officer who was shot and killed serving in Chicago. And so I'm never going to support an organization that calls to defund the police, that, that, that dishonors the memory of those people like my cousin who served honorably to defend everyday people. And I wasn't going to do that. And so the very next day, July 5th, there was a change.org petition created by students at Belmont where they said that they were going to impeach me because I was celebrating a, quote, covertly racist holiday. And if you Google my name, I'm very proud that it's still one of the, the first things that pops up that these people, you know, there were hundreds of signatures, almost 400, and many people commenting. And it was one of the most difficult times of my life. 